the conquest, the significance of Canaan in ancient geography. Canaan, often referred to as the Levant, has been a pivotal region throughout history, primarily due to its geographical and geopolitical significance. The term Levant finds its roots in the French word Levant, meaning rising, indicative of the direction where the sun rises. In contemporary context, the Levant encompasses a broad region inclusive of modern nations like Cyprus, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Syria, and Turkey. These nations are collectively known for their rich prehistoric, ancient, and medieval heritage. The Fertile Crescent, famously known as the Cradle of Civilization, is a crescent-shaped region geographically defined by the Taurus, Kurdistan, and Sagros Mountains in the north, the Arabian Syrian Desert in the south, and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. This region is historically significant for its rich Mesopotamian and Levantine cultures. Mesopotamia, translating to between the rivers and Greek, refers to the land nestled between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The Levant, borrowing its name from the French term Leber, meaning to raise, signifies the eastern Mediterranean seaboard, now comprising countries like Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel, renowned for their towering mountain ranges and significant historical relevance. Canaan, a strategic land bridge connecting the major population centers of Mesopotamia and Egypt, has been a focal point for trade, cultural exchange, and religious influences. Spanning merely 50 miles in width and 100 miles in length, Canaan's terrain has been the backdrop for the majority of biblical narratives. It is in this land that Abraham received God's promise of possession for his descendants, a land repeatedly described in religious texts as flowing with milk and honey. Palestine's geography is marked by small size yet diverse terrain from the fertile coastal plain along the Mediterranean to the rugged hill country, home to Jerusalem, the land showcases a range of geographical features. The elevation varies dramatically with Jerusalem sitting approximately 2,600 feet above sea level, while the Dead Sea shoreline lies 1,200 feet below sea level. This geographical diversity has significantly influenced the region's history, with inhabitants historically seeking refuge in the hills during times of conflict. Canaan's geography, where four ecological zones, zones converge, presents an astonishing variety of landscapes within a relative, relatively small area. From snowy mountains in the north to the arid Dead Sea in the south, the region boasts diverse climatic conditions. The area is also known for its significant rainfall variation, with Jerusalem receiving substantial rainfall annually, contrasting sharply with the minimal rainfall near the Dead Sea. This ecological diversity is further expanded into 10 district zones, each with its unique 
characteristic and significance. The strategic importance of Canaan as a land bridge. Canaan's role as a land bridge cannot be overstated, serving as the primary connector between major civilization. It was coveted for its ability to control trade routes and influence cultural and religious exchanges. Its geopolitical importance as a commercial and military hub has made it a target for conquest by various empires throughout history. This strategic location chosen by the sovereign God has been central to unfolding His purposes for mankind. Conclusion The region of Canaan with its rich historical, cultural, and geographical significance has been a central stage for historical events and narratives. Its diverse terrain, strategic location as a land bridge, and role in ancient trade and cultural exchanges underline its importance in understanding the historical and biblical narratives associated with this land. The intricate geography and the convergence of ecological zones contribute to the uniqueness of Canaan, making it a land of significant historical and theological interest. The people of Canaan, dynamics, culture, and spiritual landscape, socio-political structure, the sovereignty of city-states. The land destined for the Israelites was a mosaic of sovereign city-states, each governed by its own king. The city-states, often at odds with each other, fought for dominance, reflecting a region characterized by political fragmentation and conflict. This area, now known as Israel, was strategically crucial, serving as a thoroughfare connecting the empire of Egypt with other regions. Cultural sophistication, advanced material culture. Canaan was not just a battleground for petty kings, but also a cradle of advanced material culture. Archaeological findings reveal that the Canaanites possessed a superior material culture compared to the Israelites. Each city-state in Canaan was a hub of culture and sophistication. However, for the Israelites to remain faithful to their God, they were instructed to distinguish themselves from these prevailing cultures to avoid adapting the ways of the Gentiles. Military fortifications, the example of Jericho. The spiritual battle manifested in military conquest. In Catholic teaching, the conquest of Canaan, exemplified by the battle of Jericho, is often seen not merely as a historical military campaign, but also as a spiritual battle between the forces of good and evil. The fortified cities such as Jericho represent not only physical strongholds, but also spiritual strongholds of sin and paganism. The walls of Jericho can be seen as symbols of resistance against the will of God and His plan for His people. The miraculous fall of Jericho walls following Joshua's obedience to God's unusual battle plan, which is marching around the city and the blowing of trumpets, is seen as a te testament to the fire of faith and obedience. 
in Catholic understanding, this event prefigures the victory of Christ who conquers sin and death not by might but through His sacrificial death and resurrection. The fall of Jericho is a reminder that true victory comes not from human strength but from surrendering to God's will and relying on His divine power. The role of divine intervention. The Catholic perspective acknowledges that the success of the Israelites in conquering heavily fortified cities like Jericho was due to divine intervention. This aligns with the understanding that God is the Lord of history, guiding and intervening in human affairs to fulfill His divine plan. The conquest of Jericho serves as a powerful example of how God works through human history to achieve His purposes, often in ways that transcend human understanding. Religious Landscape, Pagan Practices and Cults The Call to Holiness Amidst Pagan Practices The presence of pagan practices in cults in Canaan posed a significant spiritual threat to the Israelites. The worship of deities like El, Asherah, Baal, and the horrific acts associated with the cult of Molech directly contradicted the first commandment to worship the Lord God alone and uphold the standards of morality and justice. From a Catholic viewpoint, the Israelites' encounter with these pagan cultures serves as a stark reminder of the constant call to holiness and the need to resist the allure of sin and false gods. The Church teaches that Christians, like the Israelites, are called to be in the Word but not of it, maintaining their distinctiveness as people set apart for God. The contrast between paganism and God's righteousness. The moral laxity and abhorrent practices of the Canaanite religions stand in stark contrast to the righteousness, purity, and respect for life that the Lord requires of His people. The Catholic Church sees this contrast as a call to its members to uphold the dignity of every human life, oppose practices that devalue life and maintain moral integrity in a world where moral relativism open prevails. Conclusion The military challenges and the religious landscape of Canaan as narrated in the conquest of Jericho and the encounter with pagan cults provide profound lessons from a Catholic perspective. These narratives remind the faithful of the spiritual battles they face the importance of reliance on God's power and the call to be a distinct and holy people amidst a world of conflicting values and beliefs. The church, much like the Israelites entering Canaan, is called to engage with the word, uphold the truth of the gospel, and be a beacon of God's love, truth, and righteousness. Entering the land from the book of Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 and chapter 12. A deeper insight. Spinach in Jericho. The role of Rahab from a theological perspective. 
in the narrative of Joshua, the story of Rahab is not just a tale of spinage, but also a profound lesson in faith and redemption. Rahab, a Canaanite prostitute, makes an unlikely hero in the biblical account. Her decision to hide the Israelite spies and her acknowledgement of the power of the God of Israel symbolize a profound conversion of heart. This conversion is not merely from one religion to another, but from a life of sin to a recognition and acceptance of the true God. From a Catholic perspective, Rahab's story is a testament to God's grace, which can reach individuals in any circumstance and transform the most unlikely person into instruments of his divine plan. Rahab's inclusion in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, further underscores the theme of redemption and God's ability to bring about salvation through unexpected means and people. The psychological state of Canaan, fear and awe in the face of the divine. The fear and awe that Rahab describes among the inhabitants of Canaan are indicative of the broader recognition of the power of the God of Israel. The Canaanites, despite their own religious practices and dates, cannot ignore the mighty acts of the Israelites' God, from the parting of the Red Sea to the victories of their powerful kings. This realization instills a sense of dread, highlighting the stark contrast between the impotence of the Canaanites' gods and the omnipotence of the God of Israel. From a theological standpoint, this fear and awe also reflect a universal acknowledgement of the divine, even among those who do not yet know God fully. The Catholic Church recognizes that God's revelation is not limited to the chosen people but extends to all nations, calling everyone to a recognition of the true God and an invitation to conversion. The strategic sending of spies by Joshua and the subsequent protection offered by Rahab represent a confluence of human prudence and divine providence. While Joshua acts wisely as a military leader, the unfolding events show a clear divine orchestration. Rahab's protection of the spies and her recognition of their God as the supreme power symbolize the beginning of the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Conclusion the narrative of the Israelites' entry into the land, particularly the spinage in Jericho and the role of Rahab, is rich in theological and spiritual insights. It illustrates the integration of human strategy with divine guidance, the universality of God's revelation, and the transformative power of faith and conversion. Rahab's story, set against the backdrop of fear and awe among the Canaanites, highlights the omnipotence of God and sets the stage for the unfolding of His divine plan in the history of salvation. The psychological state of the Canaanites, marked by fear and awe, foreshadows the impending change in the spiritual landscape of the land, paving the way for the establishment of a people under the covenant with the one true God.
divine strategy, the gradual conquest in its implications, the prudent approach of a gradual conquest. The book of Exodus reveals a divine strategy that is both practical and considerate, a gradual conquest of Canaan. This approach was not a result of weakness or indecision, but a deliberate plan to ensure the land's sustainability and the well-being of the Israelites. By preventing the land from becoming desolate and protecting from becoming overrun by wild animals, God demonstrated His foresight and care for creation. This methodical strategy also allowed the Israelites to grow in strength and numbers, ensuring they could effectively manage and cultivate the land they were to inherit. From a theological perspective, this gradual approach can also be seen as a form of divine pedagogy. God was not only preparing the land for the Israelites, but also preparing the Israelites for the land. By experiencing the conquest and stages, the people of Israel could grow in faith, learn to rely on God's guidance, and develop the societal structures necessary for a stable and flourishing community. Rahab's Legacy a narrative of inclusion and redemption. Rahab's story transcends her immediate circumstances, becoming a powerful narrative of inclusion and redemption within the biblical text. Her integration into the lineage of the Israelites is not a merely historical note. It is a theological statement about the nature of God's grace and the reach of His providence. Rahab, once an outcast on the fringes of society, is brought into the very heart of the Israelite community, her lineage leading to King David and ultimately to Jesus Christ. This remarkable transformation highlights the inclusive nature of God's plan of salvation. It shows that God's grace can reach anyone, transcending cultural, ethnic, and moral barriers. Rahab's story is a testament to the power of faith and the possibility of a new beginning, regardless of one's past. Conclusion, the multi- faceted nature of the conquest of Canaan. The conquest of Canaan as portrayed in the biblical narratives was far more than a mere military campaign. It was a complex interplay of divine strategy, cultural encounters, spiritual dynamics, and profound personal transformations. The gradual conquest of the land demonstrates God's wisdom and care for creation, ensuring the sustainability of the land and the well-being of His people. Moreover, the narrative of Rahab intertwines with the larger story of the Israelites, illustrating the redemptive and inclusive nature of God's dealings with humanity. Her legacy, culminating in the birth of King David and the genealogy of Jesus Christ, underscores the theme of redemption and the comprehensive scope of God's salvific plan. In essence, the story of the conquest of Canaan is a narrative of divine providence, human struggle, and the transformative power of faith. It invites reflection on the ways God's purposes unfold in history and the role of individuals in participating in His grand design. Through these events, the land of Canaan and its inhabitants 
underwent a profound transformation, setting the stage for a legacy that would shape the course of history and the unfolding story of salvation. Crossing the Jordan, a new chapter in the Israelite journey from a spiritual perspective. Preparation for a Miraculous Crossing, a Testament to Faith and Obedience. The preparation of the Israelites at Sittim was not merely a logistical arrangement. It was a profound spiritual exercise that set the stage for God's miraculous intervention. The sanctification rituals and the reverent positioning of the Ark of the Covenant were external expressions of an internal dispositions of faith and obedience. In the Catholic tradition, these preparatory acts are reminiscent of the sacramental life of the Church, where believers are continually called to prepare their hearts and purify themselves to encounter God's presence and grace. The Ark of the Covenant, born by priests and leading the people, symbolizes Christ who leads and sanctifies his people. The respectful distance maintained from the ark underscores the reverence due to the holy presence of God. A theme deeply embedded in Catholic worship and the veneration of the sacred. Miraculous parting of the Jordan River, echoes of baptism and new beginnings. The parting of the Jordan River is not just a miraculous event in history. It holds deep sacramental significance, prefiguring in the sacrament of baptism in the Christian faith. Just as the Israelites passed through the waters of the Jordan and to the Promised Land, so too do Christians pass through the waters of baptism into a new life in Christ. The crossing of the Jordan represents a transition from the old to the new, from bondage to freedom, a theme central to the Christian understanding of salvation and redemption. Memorializing the crossing, stones of remembrance and the Eucharistic memory. The act of setting up stones as a memorial by Joshua in the Israelites is reminiscent of the Catholic practice of memorializing God's saving deeds, most profoundly in the celebration of the Eucharist. Just as the stones serve as a tangible reminder of God's faithfulness and power, the Eucharist serves as the living memorial of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection, perpetually making present the sacrifice of the cross. The waters return, the continuity of God's providence and grace. The return of the waters to the usual course after the crossing signifies the continuity of God's providence and grace. While God intervenes in history and miraculous ways, the ordinary flow of life is itself a testament to His ongoing care and presence. In Catholic teaching, God's grace is not limited to extraordinary moments but is continuously at work, guiding and sustaining His people in every moment of their lives. Conclusion, Crossing into a Life of Covenant and Promise The crossing of the Jordan River by the Israelites marks a decisive transition from a nomadic life in the wilderness to a settled existence in the Promised Land. This event is rich in spiritual symbolism, reflecting themes of purification, transition, memorialization, and the fulfillment of divine promises. In the broader narrative of salvation history, 
the crossing prefigures the Christian journey of faith where believers are called to cross from the old life of sin into the new life of grace, guided by Christ, the true ark of the covenant, and sustained by the constant flow of His merciful love and providence. The rite of circumcision and the celebration of Passover, covenantal milestones. The rite of circumcision, a covenantal seal. The rite of circumcision performed in the plains of Jericho was not a mere cultural or traditional procedure. It was a profound spiritual act, reaffirming the covenant made with Abraham and symbolizing the Israelites' dedication to God's commands. This rite marked the Israelites as distinct among the nations, signifying their unique relationship with God. In Catholic understanding, circumcision prefigures the sacraments of initiation, which is baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist which mark Christians as God's own and initiate them into the life of grace and communion with Him. The plains of Jericho, therefore, transform from a battleground into a place of healing and spiritual renewal. The act of circumcision here represented a collective commitment to walk in the ways of the Lord, shedding the remnants of their past life, and fully embracing their identity as God's chosen people. Gilgal, a symbol of transformation and renewal. Gilgal, meaning rubble, stone heap, stands as a powerful symbol of transformation and renewal. The naming of this place reflected the Israelites' transition from a life of disgrace and bondage in Egypt to a life of dignity and freedom in the promised land. Gilgal became a spiritual landmark, reminding the Israelites and future generations of God's redemptive power and His ability to bring new life out of the rubble of the past. In the Catholic tradition, places of spiritual significance such as Gilgal remind the faithful of God's transformative presence in their lives. They serve as a tangible reminders of the journey from sin to grace, from death to new life in Christ. The celebration of Passover and the cessation of manna. The celebration of Passover at Gilgal mark a pivotal moment in the life of the Israelite community. This feast commemorated God's deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt and was a testament to His faithfulness and saving power. The cessation of manna following the celebration signified a shift from divine provision in the wilderness to a life of fruitful labor and harvest in the promised land. It symbolized the maturation of the Israelites' faith and their readiness to take active stewardship of the land God had given them. In Catholic theology, the Passover is seen as a prefiguration of the Eucharist, the true Paschal Lamb being Christ Himself. The transition from manna to the produce of the land parallels the transition from the old covenant marked by the manna to the new covenant marked by the Eucharist, the true bread from heaven. Conclusion A Journey of Faith, Obedience, and Divine Providence The crossing of the Jordan, the rite of circumcision at the plains of Jericho, the establishment of Gilgal as a place of renewal, and the celebration of Passover together mark the beginning of a new chapter in the Israelites' journey. These events are not merely historical footnotes, but are rich in spiritual symbolism and 
theological significance. The underscore the themes of faith, obedience, covenantal relationship, and divine providence. In the Catholic perspective, these events prefigure the Christian journey of faith where believers are called to leave behind their old life of sin, embrace a new identity in Christ, and actively participate in the life of grace and divine providence. Just as the Israelites experienced God's guidance and provision in their journey, so are Christians today called to trust in God's presence and work in their lives. Celebrating the new life of grace, He offers through His Son, Jesus Christ. Conquering the Land Initial Victories and Divine Commands from a Theological Perspective The Divine Mandate of Harem a call to purification and separation. The concept of harem or the divine mandate to utterly destroy all within the conquered cities is a difficult and complex aspect of the Israelite conquest of Canaan. This commandment, though seemingly harsh, had profound spiritual and theological implications. It was not about mindless destruction, but was a radical call to purification and a stark separation from the idolatrous practices and moral corruptions of the Canaanite culture. From a Catholic perspective, Harim can be understood as a drastic measure to protect the spiritual integrity and identity of the Israelite people. It was a call to eliminate the temptation of idolatry and to establish a society grounded in the worship of the one true God. This commandment was about safeguarding the covenant relationship between God and His people, ensuring that the holiness and distinctiveness of Israel were maintained. The role of Harim in the divine plan of salvation the harem was not merely a historical occurrence, but also a part of the divine pedagogy, teaching future generations the seriousness of sin and the necessity of radical conversion. The complete destruction of the Canaanite cities and their idols served as a tangible reminder of God's supreme sovereignty and His intolerance of sin and idolatry. In Catholic theology, the Old Testament is read in light of the New Testament. The harshness of Harim is seen as prefiguring the radicalness of Christ's call to conversion and the complete surrender required to enter the kingdom of God. It also prefigures the final judgment where evil and sin will be utterly destroyed and God's justice will be fully manifested. The preservation of precious metals and materials, symbols of redemption. The preservation of precious metals and materials, which were to be dedicated to the Lord's treasury, is symbolic of redemption and purification. In Catholic understanding, this act prefigures the redemption brought about by Christ, who purifies and redeems what is valuable, transforming it for God's glory. Just as the precious metals were preserved and consecrated to God, so are the souls redeemed by Christ, purified and offered to God. Conclusion Understanding Harim in the context of God's salvific plan The divine mandate of Harim of, as part of the Israelite conquest of Canaan is a complex and challenging aspect of biblical history. However, when understood in the broader context of God's plan of salvation, it reveals profound truths 
about the seriousness of sin, the necessity of spiritual purification, and the radical nature of God's call to holiness. In the Catholic tradition, the narratives of the Old Testament are read in the light of Christ's redemptive work. The harem is seen not just a historical event, but as a prefiguration of the radical transformation and purification that takes place in the hearts of believers through Christ. It underscores the call to live a life separated from sin, fully dedicated to the worship and service of the one true God. The Fall of Jericho, a paradigm of divine intervention and human obedience. The Conquest of Jericho, a testament to divine strategy and human faith. The Fall of Jericho is one of the most iconic narratives in the Old Testament, showcasing the interplay of divine power and human obedience. The city of Jericho with its formidable walls represented a significant obstacle to the Israelites' conquest of Canaan. However, the method of its conquest was unconventional and wholly divine in its strategy. The Israelites, led by Joshua and the Ark of the Covenant, circled the city in a seven-day procession, culminating in the miraculous collapse of the city walls on the seventh day. This event is a vivid testament to the power of faith and the necessity of obedience to God's commands. It demonstrates that victory comes not through human strength or conventional tactics, but through adherence to God's word and trust in His sovereign power. From a Catholic perspective, the fall of Jericho serves as a powerful allegory for the spiritual journey. The walls of Jericho can symbolize the barriers of sin and resistance that separate humanity from God. The procession around the city reflects the spiritual pilgrimage of believers who are called to trust in God's promises and follow His guidance, even when it seems counterintuitive or challenging. The Sin of Achan, the Grave Consequences of Disobedience The narrative of Achan's sin and the subsequent defeat at Ai provides a sobering counterpoint to the miraculous victory at Jericho. Achan's act of keeping some of the devoted items from Jericho was a direct violation of the Herring Commandment, demonstrating a personal failure to adhere to the covenant with God. This sin had communal consequences, leading to the defeat of the Israelites at Ai and revealing a profound truth. The success of the community in fulfilling its divine mission is contingent on the faithfulness of its members. In Catholic teaching, Achan's sin underscores the doctrine of original sin and the nature of personal sin as having both personal and communal consequences. Sin disrupts not only one's relationship with God, but also the harmony of the entire community. The story of Achan is a reminder of the need for repentance, communal accountability, and the mercy and justice of God in dealing with His people. Conclusion The fall of Jericho and the sin of Achan as lessons of faith. The narratives of the fall of Jericho and the sin of Achan present profound lessons about faith, obedience, and the consequences of sin. They illustrate that the journey of faith is not without its challenges and that victory in God's plan requires more than the mere human effort. It requires a heart fully aligned with God's will. In the broader context of salvation history, 
These events prefigure the ultimate victory of Christ who triumphs over sin and death not through human power, but through His sacrificial love on the cross. The story of Jericho and I invites believers to reflect on their own spiritual journey, emphasizing the need for unwavering faith, strict adherence to God's commands, and the humility to seek forgiveness and restoration when they fall short. These narratives remind the faithful that in every challenge, God's power is made perfect in human weakness and His divine strategy surpasses all human understanding. The rectification and ultimate victory at I. Upon uncovering Achan's transgression, Joshua and the Israelites took drastic measures to cleanse the sin from their midst, resulting in the stoning of Achan and his family. This act of rectification realigned the Israelites with God's will, leading to a revised strategy and eventual victory over I. The episode underscored the importance of collective purity and obedience in achieving success and their divine mission. Harim's Way Warfare A Symbol of Purgatory The concept of harem can be seen as a precursor or a typology of purgatory, reflecting the spiritual principle that only what is purified can be presented to God. Just as harem dictated the preservation of only those items that could withstand fire, like silver, gold, and metal vessels, the New Testament teachings in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 12 to 15 illustrate how its person deeds will be tested by fire, and only what is pure and enduring will receive a reward. Conclusion The initial conquest of Jericho and I, guided by the principle of Harim, highlight a period of intense spiritual and moral instruction for the Israelites. These events teach profound lessons about the necessity of obedience, the gravity of sin, and the purification process that aligns the faithful with divine will. The narrative serves not only as a historical account of the Israelites' journey into the Promised Land, but also offers deep spiritual insights symbolizing the purification process that believers undergo, akin to the concept of purgatory and their journey towards holiness and divine acceptance. Hosea chapter 2 verse 15 and the Valley of Acre from Judgment to Hope The Valley of Acre, a symbol of transformation. The Valley of Acre initially a place of severe judgment and punishment as seen in the story of Achan in Joshua chapter 7 verse 26 undergoes a profound transformation in its symbolic meaning through the prophetic vision in Hosea chapter 2 verse 15. This valley, once a scene of great sorrow and a reminder of sin and its consequences, is re-envisioned as a door of hope. The transition from judgment to hope signifies God's redemptive power and His ability to transform situations of despair into ones of potential and promise. Historical Context The Long-Awaited Fulfillment The prophecy in Hosea chapter 2 verse 15 can be viewed against the backdrop of a historical promise made to Abraham 400 years prior in Genesis chapter 15 verses 14 to 16. This period of waiting and the eventual judgment upon the Amorites signify God's perfect timing and justice in dealing with nations. 
the return of the Israelites to their land in the judgment upon the Amorites symbolized the fulfillment of God's long-standing promise and His sovereignty over history. The Contrast and Divine Commands Jericho versus I The different divine instructions regarding the spoils of Jericho and I highlight God's sovereignty and wisdom in His commands. While Jericho was placed under a complete ban or harem, I presented a different scenario where the Israelites were allowed to take livestock and other spoils. This distinction underscores that God's commands are not arbitrary but are rooted in His divine wisdom and justice as affirmed in the Catechism number 271. The divine displeasure in death in the call or a response. Scripture, particularly Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 32 and chapter 33 verse 11 emphasizes that God does not delight in the death of the wicked but rather desires repentance and life. This divine disposition calls for a human response of faith, trust, and obedience. Faith involves the total submission of one's intellect and will to God, acknowledging Him as the supreme revealer of truth. The obedience of faith is a profound acknowledgement of God's sovereignty in a commitment to align one's life with His divine will. Trusting in God's Providential Action in History The Christian understanding of prayer and faith is deeply rooted in the recognition of God's action throughout history, particularly in the Passion and Resurrection of Jesus Christ. This historical reality ignites trust and confidence in God's plan of love for humanity. Engaging in prayer and living a life of faith are thus seen as active cooperation with God's providence, affirming that even the most challenging moments can be transformed into opportunities for hope and renewal, much like the symbolic transformation of the Valley of Acre from a place of judgment to a door of hope. Victory and Covenant Renewal, The Journey of Possession and Promise Covenant Renewal at Mount Ebal In the profound moments of religious significance, Joshua led the Israelites in renewing their covenant with the Lord at, at Mount Ebal. The scene was marked by unity and inclusivity with all members of the community both Israelite and alien, participating in the solemn event. The positioning of the participants flanked by the Ark of the Covenant and divided between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal symbolized the collective commitment of the people to the laws and blessings set forth by Moses, reaffirming their dedication to God's commandments and their identity as his chosen people. The Southern and Northern Military Campaigns The chapters detailing the Southern and Northern Campaigns underscore the strategic and divinely guided military efforts led by Joshua. The Southern Campaign highlighted by the miraculous event where the sun stood still over Gibeon showcases the mighty hand of God in aiding Israel's conquest. The northern campaign, marked by unity among the enemy kings, further emphasizes the divine favor upon Israel, ensuring their victory against seemingly overwhelming odds. The Treaty with the Gibeonites The incident with the Gibeonites reveals the complexity of the Israelites' journey in taking possession of the land. The Gibeonites, 
Fearing the might of Israel, resorted to deception to secure a peace treaty. Despite being deceived, Joshua honored the agreement, demonstrating a commitment to integrity and treaty obligations. However, the Gibeonites were assigned a servile status, reflecting the consequences of their deception. Dividing the land and acknowledging future challenges. As Joshua aged, the Lord reminded him of the unfinished task of conquering the remaining lands. The regions still to be possessed were outlined, including the territories of the Philistines, the Jesurites, and various other groups. This portion of the narrative not only details the geographical boundaries of the remaining conquest, but also reaffirms God's promise to drive out the inhabitants, ensuring that the land would be inherited by the Israelites as promised. The task of dividing the land among the tribes as inheritance further solidified the realization of the promise made to the forefathers of Israel. Conclusion The covenant renewal at Mount Abel the strategic military campaigns, the intricate treaty with the Gibeonites, and the division of the land encapsulate the multifaceted journey of the Israelites from conquest to possession. These events underscore the importance of faithfulness to God's covenant, the reliance on divine guidance in the face of formidable challenges, and the meticulous adherence to the Lord's commands in the distribution of the promised inheritance. The narrative serves as a testament to God's faithfulness in fulfilling His promises and the call for His people to respond with obedience, integrity, and unwavering faith. Tribal Allotments in the Journey to Rest in the Promised Land the special status of the Levites. The Levites set apart for religious duties and service to the Lord did not receive a tribal allotment of land like the other tribes of Israel. Instead, they were granted cities of refuge and surrounding pasture lands for their livestock. This unique provision underscores the Levites' dedicated role in spiritual leadership and the maintenance of religious order and justice within the Israelite community. The Allotment for Joseph's Descendants The descendants of Joseph, namely the half-tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, received their inheritance in the land of Canaan fulfilling Jacob's blessing and prophecy. This allotment not only signified the fulfillment of divine promises, but also demonstrated the meticulous care in maintaining tribal identities and inheritance rights even among the half-tribes. Cities of Rebuge and Levitical Cities The establishment of cities of Rebuge was a significant aspect of the Israelite legal system, providing a merciful provision for those who committed unintentional manslaughter. These cities offered protection from the avenger of blood until a fair trial could be conducted. In addition to the cities of refuge, Levitical cities were allocated for the Levites ensuring that the spiritual leaders of Israel were distributed throughout the land to guide and instruct the people in the ways of the Lord. Rest in the Land Joshua's Final Address and Covenant As Joshua's life neared its end, he gathered the tribes of Israel to offer a final exhortation and to renew the covenant with God. In his address, 
He reminded the people of the mighty acts of God in their history, urging them to adhere faithfully to the Lord's commands, avoid entanglements with the surrounding nations, and serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Joshua's leadership, culminating in this covenant renewal, aimed to solidify Israel's commitment to God and ensure that the legacy of faithfulness would endure beyond his tenure. Joshua's Covenant and Death In a solemn moment, Joshua established a covenant at Shechem, marking a renewed commitment of the people to serve the Lord exclusively. This covenant served as a spiritual anchor for the nation, reaffirming their collective identity as God's chosen people and their commitment to His laws. Joshua's death at the age of 110 years marked the end of an era, but his leadership, guidance, and the covenant he facilitated left an enduring legacy that shaped the spiritual journey of the Israelites in the Promised Land. Conclusion The distribution of tribal allotments, the special provision for the Levites, the establishment of cities of refuge, and the final covenant renewal under Joshua's leadership collectively represent the multi-faceted process of taking possession of the promised land. This period was not only about physical settlement but also about spiritual consolidation, ensuring that the land granted by God would be a place where justice, mercy, and faithfulness would flourish under the covenant relationship between God and His people. Thank you for watching episode 10, The Conquest and the Significance of Canaan. We explored how Canaan's geography, cultural dynamics, and strategic importance have influenced biblical history, from the land bridge that connected the ancient civilization to the spiritual battles presented by fortified cities like Jericho, Canaan remained a land of profound historical and theological interest. We hope you found this episode insightful and enriching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Your support helps us continue to bring you more content in biblical narratives and their significance. Stay tuned for our next episode, Judges, Every Man Did What Was Right in His Own Eyes, where we'll delve into the period of the Judges, exploring the incomplete conquest of Canaan, the moral and spiritual chaos, and the cycle of sin and redemption that defined this era. We look forward to exploring these rich and complex stories with you. Thank you once again for joining us. Until next time, may peace be with you.